I decided to call my speech Today's Winners, Yesterday's Dreamers. Because the rest of the people that we are going to meet today is people that has made a dream come true. And the people that we celebrated yesterday were also people who 10 or 20 years ago had a vision, had an idea, had a dream, and also had the energy and the drive to make it come true. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about. And it might just be the case that you don't get my point until the end. So please bear with me. If we're going to talk about 2028, meaning looking 20 years ahead, a very good way to start is looking 20 years back. So let's go back to 1988. Now, 1988, what happened in 1988? Well, George Bush was elected. George Bush Sr. There was an Olympics in Korea. There was the Olympics in Seoul. And a plane was being shut down over Lockerbie in Scotland. Long ago, but not that long ago. And I have decided I'm going to pick one industry. I'm going to look at what was it like 1988 and what it is like today. And I have chosen the communication industry. Now, of course, since this is history, we all know about it, so it's going to be repetition. But I need to do it from a rhetorical point of view. So let's go back. Let's look at the communication industry, 1988. Basically, the communication industry was set up by a bunch of monopolies or oligopolies, but usually or almost always were state-owned companies or state companies themselves. There were very few services. Actually, there was only one service. You could talk on your phone, and that was basically it. And it was a big focus on stability, because telephones were very important infrastructural systems, and they had to work. A telephone call between Sweden and America was $2 per minute. And the most hated bill was the telephone bill. And many were those teenage girls that were, were, were called in to mother and father to sit down at the kitchen table and learn the virtue of making short telephone calls. Not to talk about dick some part. 1988. I think a good way to symbolize the telecom industry in 1988 is to symbolize it with Lars. Lars Barry used to be at Ericsson and in 1994 became the CEO of Telia, former Telia Radcliffe. And things had been basically the same for 100 years. You make a phone call, we draw wires all around the country, and you pick up your phone, you make a phone call, and that is how the communication industry was supposed to be. Then suddenly something happened. Lars got competition from young entrepreneurs who had the knowledge and the information to know how things could be done, but were not stuck at how things should be done. And they had dreams, and they had visions, and they wanted to do it, and they were able to get venture capital and money so they could challenge the big Lars, bad, very big corporate government-owned communication companies. We all know the effect. It's called the dot-com boom. It was also called the dot-com bust, but I'm not going to talk about the financial bubble. I'm going to talk about the explosion of innovation that happened because new people and new money and new ideas came in. And the reason they came in, of course, was because the telephone companies were making too much money. Because they thought that the telephone was something that someone had to have. And they could charge whatever they wanted for that service because we needed that service. Twenty years later, the communication industry is totally different. We still have the big Telia and the big government-owned companies, but we also got an explosion of startups, people leaving the R&D department of the big companies, getting venture capital, starting their own ideas. We also have the big global companies like Vodafone that are bigger than the state-owned companies that we used to have, have bigger R&D departments than we had. So we can do the small innovations and the big infrastructural projects. The focus was on developing new ideas, new services, back on the internet, YouTube, Facebook, and all of that. We all know about it. Instead of a focus on stability, we had a focus on innovation. 
And a phone call between Sweden and America is not two dollars per minute anymore, it's two cents per minute, or actually it's free if you use Skype. I live in Singapore, I call my mother and my father every week. I use Skype, it doesn't cost a thing. The most hated bill is not the telephone bill. Actually, I like my mobile phone bill. Every time it comes, I smile. Because I can make as many calls as I want for a, fax, a fixed sum. And I still remember the glorious day when I called Telia and I said, I'm not going to use the landline anymore, thank you very much. <laughs> it felt so good. We went from this to this. From an ugly designed phone who could do one thing that you didn't own, you rented it, to a handheld, beautifully designed hand phone from Apple that is a more powerful computer than the one I had on my desk, 1988, for a fraction of the cost. So here we are, 2008. And now I am supposed to look 20 years ahead. If I would have stood here in 1988 and I would have described this for you, you wouldn't have believed me. And I'm going to look 20 years ahead. There's not a chance in hell that I'm going to be right. And if you think I'm going to be right now, you will be wrong. And if you think that I'm wrong because something else is going to happen, because you have a different idea of what's going to happen, you will also be wrong because we have no idea. But I don't care. I just like to do it. Let's look 20 years ahead. But instead of looking at 2028 in the communication industry, I have chosen a different industry. I have chosen electricity, power, energy. So let's look at the communication industry, no, the power industry, the, or the electric industry, or the energy industry, 2008. What does it look like? Well, basically, it's monopolies or oligopolies. They're state-owned or, for, state or formerly state-owned companies. They have very few services. Actually, they only have one. There's an emphasis, emphasis on stability, because power is something that is crucial for society, and we need to have it, and everyone needs to have it, so they can charge whatever they want. The companies that used to make the most money was the telecom companies. The U companies that used to make the most, most money now is the energy companies. The price of electricity is 109 euro per kilowatt hour. And the most hated bill is the electricity bill. And many are the teenagers' daughters who are being called into mother and father and learning the virtue of taking short showers. And when you look at it, you put it side to side, it almost becomes funny. And when you do this, it becomes even more funny. <laughs> Two industries, they used to think that what we are doing is drawing cable in the sky, one way over the countryside, another way over the countryside, and this is how it has been, and this is going how it's going to be, because nothing is going to change. And when you do this, it becomes really funny. <laughs> and when you tell them that both are named Lars, it almost becomes a joke. If you look quickly, you could think it's the same person. One is Lars Bay, CEO of Telia, 1994. The other one is Lars Gier Josefsson, CEO of Vattenfall today. But what if this Lars suddenly gets competition from these guys? What if young people with information and knowledge and dreams and vision of how things should be done look at the pot of gold that is being uh, collected at energy companies today where the profits are abnormally high, obscenely high? and say, I want to have a piece of that cake. And they go to the venture capitalist and say, look at all this money. I have a much better idea. And the venture capitalists go, yeah, that's true. We should do that. And you invest the money, you take the dreams, you take the innovations, you get it together, and you have all an explosion of new ideas. 